Monologue 44 Good Works The monotheistic religions of the past have been corrupted, tainted by scandals and hypocrisy, brutality and apostasy, and or they have become tools of the harlot and the beast. This is not intended as an insult, but is merely a statement of the facts, as the archangels view the situation. In the beginning there will be few of you, and over time you will gather your strength. A handful of the leaders of the world will change their allegiance and become leaders of the manifest kingdom. A wealthy and educated young woman, who is but a child at present, will appear among you, who will be passionate in the way. She will take up the cause as the meaning of her life, and she shall win many to the golden path by her works, formalizing the methods of the lone Urian mystics into a true religion. The woman of light shall have a human form, but in spirit she is the archangel known as Raziel. She will have many sisters. From her labors, as if giving birth to a son, shall arise a man of means and authority in the spirit of Zafkiel. He shall forcefully and powerfully take his stand for the spirit of truth against the world. By the strength of his will he shall bring forth the angel within and will become a mighty mystic and warrior. Gabriel and Sarakiel shall be his unseen teachers. By subterfuge, infiltration, cunning and understanding he will sit a throne of stone. His fellows he will gather round him from the nations he will quietly call his brothers and sisters, the penitent angels hidden among the fallen. In due course the uprising shall begin. The world shall gnash its teeth and burn the leader in effigy. Babylon shall scream in horror of the twenty laws, and the beast shall roar in defiance of the way of spirit and truth. Their rage and disdain of all that the Righteous One represents will set Gog and Magog upon a course to eventual conflict. You will know him by her blessing. He is kind and cruel, a thinker and a doer, a warrior and a priest, a destroyer and a builder, a man of patient reflection and of decisive action. There is no way to defeat Zafkiel. For if destroyed in one human form, he, it, she, will simply take another. Once unleashed, he, it, she, will either establish the kingdom or destroy the world in the process. I will give you a process by which to select your national leaders, and indeed I will give you an entire system of government. The Righteous One will not be revealed by his words or self-made claims, but by his deeds shall he be known to you and hated by the world. A leader who glorifies himself and boasts of God's anointing is inferior. A leader who seeks to rewrite or ignore this revealing and its principles to serve his or her own ends is a deceiver. Even angels can fall, for when in human form they are not in the fullness of their nature, and the fragment embedded in flesh can become corrupted as with the spirits within all mortals. Be realistic in your expectations, remembering the righteous men and women of the past, and knowing that in human form angels are going to make mistakes and are going to have failings just as you do. When the righteous one comes, he shall cease to be merely a Urian, but must work to be a leader to all sincere and faithful Zoroastrians, Jews, Samaritans, Christians, Muslims, Sikhs, and Baha'i. He must regard all true and faithful ones as his brothers and sisters in the oneness of the Most High. In unifying the seven with the eighth, there is no nation above or below that can stop you from taking the earth away from the non-gods and their vile offspring. Good deeds can often seem, from the perspective of the worldly and the godless, like wickedness because the vile fear and thus hate anything that might threaten their freedom to sin unchecked. No matter what sash you wear, you have your part to play in the grand plan of the ages, and must come to see yourself as an angel among men, for indeed this is what you have become. The agenda of angels is not the will of humans. Soup kitchens and homeless shelters can have far more value than bullets or bombs, 
and a lawyer or politician can win more ground for the cause than a legion of soldiers. Artists inspire and uplift the consciousness of men and women, and weave the vision of the kingdom for which to aspire. Teachers and organizers, the clerks and scholars of the way, are invaluable in their tedious efforts, which few have the patience to maintain. And yet the need for the warriors is dictated by the bestial nature of your level of being, and without them the kingdom will not appear, nor can it be preserved against a world of Nephilim. Armageddon is an ongoing war between Homo Angelicum and Homo Sapiens, which began at the dawn of human history and endures to this present day. Moreover, what no archangel has told you until now is that the Holy Ones can lose the battle for the earth, and indeed are losing. In winning the war, the children of the beast and Babylon condemn themselves to the dragon's good graces, and the dragon seeks only their annihilation preferring a slow and painful method that generates shadow life. Each individual, no matter how poor or shy, can be of assistance to the manifestation of the goals of the way, if only with consistent daily prayers, or in donating even their spare change. Yet if all just pray, nothing shall come into being on the material plane, and pennies alone shall not give rise to a literal nation. Passive believers fill the ranks of the religions of the world, and they are nearly useless to anyone save themselves. Attending churches, even when they do not believe in what is taught and claiming to be this or that, while promoting other views in their public and private lives. If you are such a Urian, just go your way and seek service with other masters. Action, doing, living what you say, walking what you talk is of absolute necessity. If a person does no other devotion save good deeds in the name of God, rather than for their own glorification, then shall that person enter in among the angels at the end of their days. Even should their soul not endure, their spirit will find rest. Yet, in having said this, do not neglect the other six devotions. For in the seven will soul and spirit become one, and eternal life for the living soul shall be one. Indeed, the other six devotions themselves are the seventh.